the nonprofit podcast powered by DonorBox. Good communication can be part of your organization's DNA. I'd even argue that good communication can help you keep the lights on and power your mission. Today, I'm joined by a guest who shares her approach to communicating and shares some practical actions that can be a boost to any nonprofit leader, founder, or fundraiser. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Kara, fundraising coach at DonorBox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. A few episodes ago, we introduced DonorBox's five A's of awesome fundraising and shared an easy method to make sure you're sharing the right information with your supporters at the right time. Today, we'll learn how one Chicago organization has invested in communication for their nonprofit and how it's really creating a community. We'll learn more about what they've done and how to adapt it for any growing organization. And that organization is Sista Afia Community Care in Chicago, and they provide high-quality mental wellness care to hundreds of women and rely on donor support to keep their programs low-cost or even no-cost. I love hearing more about how small teams can make a big difference, and Sista Afia Community Care is doing just that. Kamisha Jones is the Community Care's Executive Director, and she joins us today. So welcome, Kamisha. Hi, Kara. Thank you for having me here. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I've really admired a lot of the work you're doing. I know DonorBox featured Sista Afia Community Care in a spotlight last year, and I've been following you on LinkedIn and Instagram. I've been following your podcast and seeing what you're doing online, and I really admire what you're doing. I I must say that you're doing it really well. You have enthusiastic supporters, you have an enthusiastic team, and you're making a big difference in this world, but your team is pretty small, isn't it? Yes, yes. We're small but mighty. That's what I tell everyone. I love it. And most of our donor box organizations are really trying to do it with a small team too. So I'm really eager to learn how you are using communication to amplify the reach of your organization. So let's get started. You know, I just mentioned that we introduced the concept of the five A's on the podcast recently, and it really gives a good rhythm to any any communication communication plan. And so you would, with the five A's, you would attract new supporters to your organization. And then you ask them to come alongside you by giving. And then you promptly acknowledge them and account for their donations by showing how, you know, the impact you're having in this world. And then you do it again and again. Is there one of these areas that's more difficult for you than others? And maybe how did or how do you overcome that? Um, Out of the five A's, I would say one of the challenges can be the again part, (laughs) the again (laughs) and again, because when you are conveying your mission, the impact of your organization, you have to have multiple touch points. And so sending out that postcard once a year, sending out that one email every couple months just doesn't cut it. And so there's a constant relationship that you have to continue to maintain with your donors. And I'm getting stronger in that every year as we speak. But that I would say that's probably the challenging part is like not just getting the donation and that one acknowledgement, just keeping the door open and the communication and getting people involved so that that relationship can continue to evolve over time. Yeah, and that can be really hard when you're trying to do so many things and offering programs and managing a staff and a budget. You know, that's an easy one to let slip through the crack. But I think you've done a really good job creating a recognizable presence with your communication. So from your website to your social media, I even noticed, you know, the wall color that you use and the handouts that you have um, and some of the photos that you share. Um, It seems like, you know, you've really had this really great approach to communication. So was this a conscious decision as part of a bigger strategy or was this just something that you happened into and you're doing really well? Um, I would say a little bit of both. (laughs) So um, just a little bit of background. I initially got introduced to communications when I volunteered at an activist organization for three years and they made me communications chair. And so at that organization, I had to prepare to speak to news people. I had to send out newsletters. I had to create graphics for social media. Um, And so that experience really helped me to understand the importance of it when you're trying to grow support for whatever cause or mission that you want want to uplift. So I 
took that information and I kind of brought it into Sister Afia community care from the very beginning. So mm-hmm. it wasn't an afterthought. It was something that it was like, we have to have this one because mental health care is one of the issues that it can be hard for people to be open to. So how can you make your branding from, you know, your your messaging, your pictures, your colors, um, your content, all make m- mental health something that's for people and also welcoming. Mm-hmm. So that was like very, very intentional from the beginning. And um, our communications is a very important part of our brand and also just communicating why it's important to engage in mental health care and especially for people who have been on the margins and are a little bit more shy and sometimes, you know, mistrustful of the mental health care system that exists. Mm -hmm. And your branding is, I dare say, cheerful. Why the bold approach with your, your bold brand colors, your very vibrant images that you use. So tell me a little bit more about that approach. So the bold approach with everything, the colors, the the logo, everything, I want it to reflect what the other side of mental health care looks like. So when mm. when you are in a good place with your mental health, how do you feel? You feel joyful. Mm. You feel cared for. You feel welcome. You feel like your needs are being reflected, you know, in your care. So the way that I saw communicating that joy, that community and that togetherness was creating we had like a couple of photo days where we would just take stock pictures and you would have this black women together just laughing, you know, supporting one another, giving somebody a tissue if they're crying, different things like that, that so that we're, you know, our main outreach is black women to let them know this place is for you. Like mm-hmm. when you see Sister Afia Community Care, there's no mistake that you are supposed to be here. So that was is a part of the bold approach because we work in a field that can be difficult to engage people. And I've even seen a lot of mental health organizations have sad pictures, like people crying people. I mean, like who wants to, who wants to see that (laughs) when you're already crying, you need to see something different. I love it. I I mean, that makes so much sense when I'm feeling kind of down. I, I choose the gray sweater out of my closet when I'm feeling bright and sunny, it's the yellow or the pink. And yeah, that makes sense. We, we wear our emotions on the outside Yes, yes, absolutely. And then the colors, I wanted it to be warm. So like Mm -hmm. the browns, the golds, the reds, the turquoise are all kind of very warm colors. And that was a very intentional part of the branding and on our social media, which is how we are able to do one of those A's attract people um, is because we consistently post content that shows what we're doing. And people can say, hey, I'll give this to Safia because I saw just last week they had a workshop focused on burnout and I saw it on their social media. And so it people can see it in real time. And that, I think, helps to use communications to cultivate that donor base. Mm -hmm. It builds trust and recognition with your organization so that when you are scrolling through social media, you stop because you recognize that it's one of your posts. Now, real, real quick, had you had any formal training in branding or brand recognition or social media, or did you just learn it on the fly in, in the other organization you work for? Um, I learned it on the fly. <laughs> I'm one of those people who ha- have constantly, I'd be pushed out. There's no instructions <laughs> sometimes, and I have to figure things out. Um, I also went to a business academy, and part of you know the business academy was learning marketing and the importance of marketing. So Sisa Afia Community Care, even though it was the nonprofit that we established after we had our for-profit, that knowledge from the business academy about you got to market, you got to attract people like that approach, I kind of also put into the nonprofit because sometimes nonprofits don't think about those type of things, but it's it's really, really important. Yeah, I feel like nonprofits can look at the retail sector or tourism sector and see what they're doing well and replicate that because they're investing millions of dollars in research and people to make that happen. and, And we can kind of emulate their best practices. So that's really great. Do you have a lot of corporate support? I would say it's, I wouldn't say we have a lot of corporate support, but the corporate support that we've gotten has been spot on. (laughs) Right on the money. (laughs) So are they organizations that value mental wellness in the Chicago community, that kind of thing? Or how are they spot on? Um, So I'll give an example. So we received a grant from Athleta and Lululemon, which are both 
to wellness companies that focus on women. So those corporate donors, it's like perfect match, Mm -hmm. like wellness, women, community. So those were two corporate donors. Also WW Weight Watchers. They also are one of our corporate donors. Also received corporate support from Gucci, which was like, I couldn't believe we got support from Gucci. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, I couldn't believe it. But I think because they saw our communications, because I didn't even go look for them. I just got this random email to apply. And I was like, is this a scam? You know, mm-hmm. but I think communications can be really key to getting some of those corporate donors. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we would have gotten their attention if we weren't strong in communications throughout the Absolutely. Yeah. And and the the polished look that you have in the branding, I mean, it really does say you're legitimate um, and you're, you know, you're worth the investment. So it sounds like it's a really good investment to invest in leveling up your communications. So what are, let's talk a little bit. We talked about two of the A's. Um, Let's talk about account. How do you show impact? You have so many programs. You have so many women who are engaging with you regularly. Has something been particularly more successful than others to to share the good news of what you're doing? Mm -hmm. So we kind of hit the impact in multiple ways. So we do send out information about our impact reports. We do two a year. We have a mid-year and an end-of-year report. And so um, we send that out to our donors, uh, foundations, like literally today, I sent our 2022 impact report to one of our donors from last year. They're like, perfect timing. We want to talk about renewing. So glad to see all the work you're doing. So it's, it's something that people don't always think about, like that you have to really show your impact and that helps to keep donors, whether they're individual donors or foundations or corporations that they should continue to support you. We also show our impact on social media and in our newsletters. So we send out a newsletter once a month. And we also, um, we post to social media every single day. And some of our events that we've had at Sisa Afia, we um, record, you know, not individual therapy because that's more private, but like some of our various community program, we always get footage so that we can show these are women who actually came out. They enjoyed themselves. They they really benefited from this program. And then lastly, we collect a lot of testimonials, which is something that nonprofits do not always do the best job in. But um, at Sisa Afia Community Care, we collect feedback surveys after all of our events. So by the end of the year or throughout the year, we have hundreds of testimonials or feedback. So people can say, hey, this woman... She went and she had therapy at Sisa Afi and this was her testimonial or, you know, one of our our community events. We asked them, would you recommend our services to a friend? And 100 percent of women who take the survey say they would recommend us to a friend. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So communicating that to the Mm -hmm. public lets people know that, hey, people trust us and they feel impacted enough that they would tell somebody else to Mm -hmm. engage with us. That is great. How do you do those impact reports? Are they mailed? Are they emailed? Do you design them? Does someone else do that? How do you do that? With the impact reports, we work with a consultant. I'll give them a shout out if it's okay. (laughs) Um, Women Unite, um, we've worked with them for the past year, year, almost two years now. Um, But they have, they actually helped with a lot of our communications with our website, reports, donor engagement, So I don't do them. I'm not that talented, but (laughs) I have people who assist. That's Um, a great way to extend your team, though, to to partner with somebody mm -hmm. who does that and does that really well. Yes. If you know you're not good at it, it's okay to to, um, give it to someone else. So, yeah, we work with them and then we send a postcard electronic, you know, newsletter, get some printed as well so that we have them on site at our location. You talked about all the touch points that you have throughout the year. Do you have like a cadence of communication that you find that works really well for you? Because you're posting social media all the time. It sounds like you have 
emailed newsletters, donor communication, um, events. How do you how do you schedule it and plan it and work all that in? So definitely utilizing tools. So <laughs> for our social media, we have a social media manager. Um, her name is Gabriella, and she designs all of our social media graphics and branding, and she schedules everything. So we use a scheduling platform called Later. I also have used mm-hmm. Hootsuite. So we use that as a tool to keep ourselves organized and to plan. The other thing that social media people don't talk about is planning. Like there is a planning aspect to it. So whenever we have our mid-year or end of year, it takes us months to actually plan out the social media strategy. With the newsletter, I would say one to two times a month is a good cadence for us because you don't want to overwhelm people. You know, some of these, I'm sure you get these marketing emails every day, they sending you something and I'm like, what? Leave me alone. <laughs> so, um, so definitely communicating with a newsletter, sharing some updates, spotlighting work that's being completed, things that have been accomplished. And then also the refreshing the branding every year. So Like how I talked about that photo shoot that we had like two years ago. Well, this year we're going to do a bigger photo shoot (laughs) so that we can have those images and video as well. So we have a videographer. Her name is Kamari and she shoots all of our major events. She shot, I think, four of our events last year and us being able to share in that way. People can really see beyond the pictures like what's really happening and the quality of what we provide. Yeah, video is a really engaging way to show people your story and show people the impact instead of just telling them all the time. It sounds like you're really relying on each person's strengths. You know, you're an organization doing big things with a small team. Is that your trick? Or what is one communication tip that you would share with other organizations that are limited on time and staff and budget? Mm -hmm. I would say if you're a smaller organization, speaking to a consultant who works in nonprofit and marketing can help to save you time and energy on the back end so that when you are delegating work as a small organization or figuring out what can I do, what are my strengths, what are my you know, weaknesses where you can get support with mm-hmm. those things. Yeah. Also interns as well. Sometimes people Ooh. forget to think about interns and how they can help with a strategy if you partnered with a college or, you know, a local organization or school or something like that, where you can get an intern that maybe works in the business school, may work in communications that could help if you have like a small team. And the other thing I'll say is trainings and www, the wild, World Wide Web. Like <laughs> there's so many classes and things mm-hmm. that you can take and take advantage of where you can learn a lot of these, a lot of these skills. And the last thing I will say is staying organized. Like the more organized you are, especially if you're a smaller organization, the better you're able to plan for the future and things just come out more seamless when things are organized. So those are some of the things that have helped us as a small nonprofit. And then the last thing I would say, I keep saying the last thing. (laughs) Keep going. These are all gems. I love it. I love it. LinkedIn is a very untapped resource for executive Mm -hmm. directors in terms of showcasing your work to other people who can really be great supporters and make great connections for you. I post on LinkedIn constantly and there have been donations that have come. There have been opportunities. There's been all types of connections from LinkedIn because that's like a professional network um, of people. And so a lot of the people who are decision makers are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I feel like Instagram is more of like influencer where LinkedIn are like the head honchos, the decision Mm -hmm. makers, the leaders. So I also encourage people, if you're an ED or your team, get a LinkedIn profile and start posting because that can really help to widen your network and attract, like really do all the five A's that you all mentioned. Well, and it's an overlooked social media platform as well, I think. Those are really amazing tips. And it sounds like that they are really influencing your organization and, and the success and recognition that you're having in your community, which is fabulous. 
Kamisha, thank you so much for taking time to um, share all this with us today. I think it's going to be very helpful for organizations of all sizes. It'll be really great um, for organizations to spend some time taking a deep dive into their communications and their communication planning. And these tips are really going to be helpful there. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, our listeners, for choosing to spend time with the Nonprofit Podcast. Be sure to check out Sista Afia Community Care online. If you want to see their organization in action, we have linked that for you in the show notes. And I hope that you've left with confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Don't forget to download and review the podcast or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the nonprofit podcast on YouTube. Your review is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others. We're here to help you. So until next time, stay inspired. That warm feeling when you help someone, it's not just happiness, it's fulfillment. And we believe it should be available to everyone. From frontline heroes to first time fundraisers, our tools empower you to help others. This is our mission. This is DonorBox, helping you help others.